Every year, African countries lose an estimated $88.6 billion as illicit capital flight, according to the 2020 edition of UNCTAD's flagship report, Economic Development in Africa, entitled Tackling Illicit Financial Flows for Sustainable Development in Africa. Today, we're unpacking the issue of illicit financial flows out of Africa with Paul Akawumi, who's the director of UNCTAD's Division on Africa and Least Developed Countries. Paul, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Paul, before we get into the details of some of the impact that illicit financial flows have on the African continent, could you help us better understand what exactly we're talking about when we use the term illicit financial flows? In the report, uh, we define illicit financial flows as movements of money and assets across borders that are illegal in source, transfer or use. And they can take the form of tax and commercial practices, illegal markets, terrorist financing and theft, or corruption. Tax and commercial practices represent the greatest issue for Africa. Up to 65% of illicit financial flows, according to the UNECA estimates. Illicit financial flows also occur through trade misinvoicing, typically the under or over invoicing of commercial transactions. The report focuses on illicit capital flight, which are defined as the outflows of financial resources from a country in each period that are not recorded in official government statistics. And we found that illicit capital flight from Africa reached 88.6 billion US dollars annually between the years of 2013 and 2015. Clearly then, illicit financial flows are a significant and a shared problem between developing and developed countries. Paul, would it be fair to say that some sectors are more vulnerable than others? Absolutely. In Africa, the extractive sector, the telecommunications sector, and the financial services are the most vulnerable sectors to illicit financial flows. Since most countries in sub-Saharan Africa are commodity dependent, export flows related to commodities are focus of this particular study. In 2015 alone, according to our estimates, Africa lost at least 40 billion US dollars in primary extractions of resources and between 30 to 52 billion US dollars to trade misinvoicing. Misinvoicing occurs primarily with high value, low weight commodities, such as gold, diamonds, and platinum being particularly vulnerable. And in gold alone represents 77% of all total under invoice exports. Diamonds representing 12% and platinum representing 6%. And all the other exports make up the 5%. And what about countries, Paul? Uh, what did the report find? Have some countries been more affected by illicit financial flows than others? When we look at the capital flight estimates, the top five countries with the highest illicit financial flows as a share of GDP, and we have to look at uh, for the data that is available, uh, are Sierra Leone, Congo, Seychelles, Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The five countries with the lowest level of IFFs as a share of G GDP are Algeria, Sudan, Cote d'Ivoire, Kenya, and Morocco. Now, Paul, we've mentioned several times that illicit financial flows cost African countries an estimated $88.6 billion, which is equivalent to about 3.7% of GDP. So could we talk about some of the socioeconomic consequences of illicit financial flows? There are tremendous impacts. Illicit financial flows are not only a drain on domestic financial resources, but they are also correlated with lower government spending on key areas for development. The results of our model show that countries with high illicit financial flows spend 25% less on health and 58% less on education compared to countries with low illicit financial flows. As a result, women and girls are disproportionately negatively affected by IFFs, as they are the majority beneficiaries of public health and education expenditure. 
The report also finds that illicit financial loans are negatively associated with labor productivity growth, undermining productive capacity and achievement of the sustainable development goal number eight on decent work and economic growth. In countries with high illicit financial flows, agricultural productivity is 67% lower. Paul, in your answer, you mentioned Sustainable Development Goal 8, which is the goal focused on decent work and economic growth. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Sustainable Development Goals. The report says that curbing illicit financial flows could help reduce Africa's Sustainable Development Goal financing gap by half. Could you explain a bit more to us what that means? We mentioned earlier on that $88.6 billion dollars uh, U.S. dollars is capital flight out of Africa, and that's nearly half of the estimated 200 billion U.S. dollars needed annually in Africa to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. This money could have compensated for the 60 to 90 billion U.S. dollars that the African Development Bank estimates is needed annually to provide universal electricity access by 2025. Recent estimates by the African Development Bank, this 2018, suggest that the continent's infrastructure needs amount to between 130 and 170 billion a year, with a financing gap in the range of 68 to 108 billion. Potentially then, illicit capital flight could cover almost all of the infrastructure financing gap to meet the related SDG targets. And if we're able to see just how much illicit financial flows cost African societies and economies, and we're also able to identify the sectors that are more vulnerable. Why has it been so difficult for African leaders to stop these illicit financial flows out of the continent? Uh, good question. Illicit activities are, by their mere nature, inherently difficult to record. And this is due to the differences in legal and regulatory frameworks across jurisdictions. For example, it is difficult to separate illegal actions, for example, tax evasion, from illicit and licit practices, for example, aggressive tax avoidance and lawful tax planning. Now, efforts to stop illicit financial flows on the continent are constrained also by the lack of statistics. The measurement of trade-related IFFs in Africa is critical to combat them. However, such information is typically scattered across a range of institutions at the country level, and there is no single data source from which to derive these relevant statistics. So, Paul, what recommendations does the report make? Well, in the report, we propose a 10-point plan for tackling illicit financial flows in Africa, which centers on meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. Within this framework, we suggest coordinated action by a range of stakeholders. At firstly, at the institutional level, the policy guidance aims at contributing to multilateral cooperation to combat illicit financial flows. And at the domestic level, the regulatory framework must be strengthened. Data collection and reporting on trade, including at the trans and transactional level, should be strengthened. Enhanced regional cooperation on reporting standards for firm level tax and commercial information is, is also needed. Now, African governments should seek to collect more data and better data, potentially incorporating the use of UNCTAD's automated system for customs data, ASICUDA, including its special mineral output statistics evaluation system, MOSES, now, national data should also be reported to international databases such as UN Comtrade. In many ways, addressing illicit financial flows is a matter of ethics, and civil society organizations, whistleblowers, and investigative journalists have played a critical role in revealing the magnitude of IFFs and the mechanisms that support them in Africa and beyond. Transparency initiatives must be encouraged and continue to be encouraged, including their use in new technologies. Thanks, Paul, for helping us unpack the issue of illicit financial flows out of Africa. And this is the subject 
of the 2020 edition of UNCTAD's flagship report, Economic Development in Africa.